All right, well, with the recent release of ISO 9001-2015, the need for skilled auditors is more important than ever before. The problem, however, is that the auditing population is aging and, and precious few young professionals are stepping up to replace their older colleagues as they retire from industry. That's surprising because auditing is, is a good career choice for many with solid compensation and benefits. Even more, when it's done right, auditors add great value to the organizations with which they work and are a key part of the pursuit of excellence overall. Exemplar Global is an organization providing credential management and many different kinds of personnel certification, including for internal and external auditors. The company recently compiled a survey titled The Auditing Profession Career Pathway that asked about the skills, challenges, and opportunities presented by auditing as a profession. The white paper summarizing the research is available online at www.exemplarglobal.org. Uh, so, to chat with us now about the findings from that survey, we're pleased to introduce Exemplar Global's president and CEO, Peter Holtman. Peter, welcome to Quality Digest Live. Hi, guys. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me on the show this morning. Of course. It's our, it's our pleasure. Thank you for joining us early. You're in Sydney, and it's early there, I know. So, thank you for getting up and, and joining us on, on QDL. Thank well, you. My pleasure. As it stands now, let's, 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 let's kind of get right into it. As it stands now, in your, from your perspective, who gets into the auditing profession and, and how do they do so? Yeah, it's interesting. At the moment, currently, we, we're seeing uh, mostly males around about the 50 year age mark or a little bit older that are leaving some sort of quality technical role or some quality management role. And they're using it as the next job to take on before they go into a retirement mode. And uh, you know that's a traditional uh, sort of role that these got, that these people are taking on, but uh, that uh, that presents an interesting problem for the industry moving forward. Actually, the the survey, and I'm glad you touched on that because the survey uncovered uh, some interesting findings about that and about the barriers to entry for the profession, especially with regard to age and gender. So, can you give us a, a bit of a snapshot into those results and and some of the reasons why these barriers maybe still exist? Yeah, it was really interesting when we completed the survey, just what people were saying about the industry and how to get into it. And the perception currently is that you need to have at least 15 years of, of manufacturing or quality industry experience. Uh, in the more specific technical areas, they're expecting someone to have a, 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 a graduate degree or something higher, maybe a master's or a PhD. And then a, a very high amount of quality industry experience. And that's a potentially a very big barrier for, for the younger audience who want to come into the market because when they talk to these people that are already in the market, they're hearing this story, oh, well, you need to have the 15 years experience, uh, you need to have all of these um, extra credentials. And a lot of the, the younger audience coming through just don't have those credentials. So it, it puts up a, a, quite a barrier for anybody to, to become a professional auditor. Well, you, you bring up a good point then. I mean, it sounds like you're making the connection between experience and credibility, and those seem to be intricately linked for auditors, uh, certainly in the, the minds of auditees. So um, how, do you, how do you address that? Yeah, and uh, the interesting thing is that once we completed the survey, not only of the auditors in the marketplace, but also of their customers, the thing that came out the most is that credibility is based on the personal attribute and the, uh, in that regard, they talk about the interpersonal relationships um, uh, attributes that people bring to the role. So there's a little bit of a misnomer out there that uh, the credibility really is linked into the qualification. What's really important is how you resolve problems on site with the client, how you add, add value to the client in a very effective and efficient manner and uh, that you're actually leaving the client at the end of the day with a, with a perception that there's some value left on site. And uh, again, the, the best way of doing that is through your personal skills and your interpersonal relationship qualities that, uh, that you work with the client rather than just going in and saying, you know, the standard says this, you're doing that, thanks very much, and walk out the door. So credibility is something that can be earned very quickly and it doesn't necessarily have to come over 15 years of, of work experience. Right, and your, and your survey kind of un, uncovered that a little bit. I mean, again, coming back to this idea of, of barriers to entry, I mean, you know, there, there was a gap there, especially a gender gap, I, I guess, is really the, the interesting thing that I, I saw, that younger women, especially, as I understand it, really don't feel like this is a profession that they, 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 they normally will go into. Do you find that that is, is the truth from the survey results? 
Absolutely, the the majority of the women that we that we surveyed, and interestingly, the, the statistics show that we've we've got about eighty percent male dominated industry here. So by that alone, it creates a barrier to entry to to women who feel somewhat um, ousted out of the industry. But uh, they they come with the perception that it's the old boys club. That was some of the wording that came through from a number of the females, and that uh, it's it's quite a, a, a dominant industry. And if you're not quite a quite uh, aggressive in your stance within the industry, you're not going to make it. And uh, I, I don't think that's that's the actual case once you get in there, but that's the perception of the, the female audience that's working in the space. And uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's an attitude or an attribute that we're, we're actively trying to change. Let's talk about mentorship for a minute because I think it's important really to any job in any organization, but there seems to be something of a mentor gap maybe in the auditing profession. So what audit, what actions should long-term auditors take to help bridge that gap and encourage young people to join their ranks? Absolutely, this is a critical issue for our industry right now is when we're seeing that 75% uh, of our audience is now 65 years of age or older. I mean, we've even got auditors now that are working up past their 80s. And these people are gonna be retiring within the next five to eight years. And with them, they're taking the, the, the knowledge and the technical skills that the industry really needs. So a mentor program is really important for these people that will be thinking about leaving the industry to pass on that uh, essential technical knowledge, problem solving analysis, and uh, specialist information they've learned over the years into the, uh, and give it to the younger people that are coming into to the industry because it's gonna take them time to learn these things. And if we don't have a mentorship program set up a lot of this is going to go away and we'll end up with somewhat of a professional industry paralysis, which is it's just kind of a scary thought, actually. It seems like, I mean, a lot of these, these older uh, auditors, uh, you know, there's some tribal knowledge here, as you, as you allude to, and there's, there, there's, there's ways to provide value that, that kind of you can't really get out of, a, out of a documented procedure, right? I mean, you need to have a certain personal connection with, with the auditee and the company that you're auditing. Is that, is that an accurate assessment? Absolutely, and uh, you know we can teach anyone auditing skills, and we know that most auditors learn all of their skills within the first two and a half years of entering the auditing profession, two and a half years, and yet they stick around, most of these auditors, 15, 20, 25 years, and it's over that period of time they actually get comfortable with their role, how to use their technical competence to add value to a client, and how to work with the client um, in more of an interpersonal way to share that information around and that's the sort of stuff that we need to share with the younger people is how do you make a connection with your customer so that they're getting the value out of the process versus it being just another audit or it's uh, you know the, the the more derogatory term for auditing is the tick and flick process and that's something <laughs> we're really trying to move away from. Well I'm, I'm glad you actually touched on that I mean I think a lot of people particularly if they've been audited, um, have this perception of the auditor as, as a policeman. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, and, and you seem to be saying that what, you're, what the new auditors are being trained as is kind of de develop a, a, a relationship, so they're, they're more than just a policeman, right? Oh, absolutely, and we, we need to start instilling into people that auditing is a profession. It's not just something that happens as the byproduct of a quality process or as the compliance stage. These people are professionals. They've spent a lot of time honing their skills and becoming quite expert in defining where value can be added on site through a series of uh, auditing steps at the end of the day. And I think uh, it's, it's an incredibly underrated industry. I mean, you see accountants, you see lawyers, you see doctors, all go through the same sort of credentialing process that auditors do, and yet they have a much, they're held in much higher regard in the community than say a, a quality systems auditor or, or a, a, an environmental systems auditor. Well, Peter Haltman of, of Exemplar Global, that, that's great. Thank you for joining us and, and giving us some insight into, into the auditing profession, the future of the auditing profession. For all of you out there who are interested, make sure you check out www.exemplarglobal.org. You can, you can access their, uh, the white paper on the findings from the survey there and, uh, and learn more. So Peter, again, thank you for joining us early this morning. We appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Sure. It's good stuff. Um,
I, I like that he's that he's touching on that that whole bit about kind of the yeah. personal relationship that mm. an auditor doesn't just walt, waltz yeah. in, mm -hmm. check off a bunch of boxes and, and waltz out. And, and and this is what we're talking about with the experience yeah. here is that is that that's something that you you can't just learn from a document. You can't just say okay, I'm going to get that perspective from from some checklist yourself of learning how to be an auditor. You need to have a personal experience, and you need to learn from people that have done it before how you do that. It's very important. So right. I think what he's talking about there is really 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 key. So absolutely. So again, check that out at www exemplarglobal.org and find out more.